apparently there's a race on. I mean, people want it to be like the 2000s again. Hey look, BTCC regulation changes! The long-time viewers of this channel will know that I love touring cars as much as I do the open wheel stuff. And while I've fallen a little bit out of love with the Australian touring cars at the minute, the BTCC always has me coming back for more. And when the next season starts, I want to try and make more of an effort to cover it because, well, the world needs to know that this sport exists. Now, the BTCC, unlike that shit show in Abu Dhabi today, produces some of the best bumper-to-bumper -bumper racing you'll find anywhere. Sure, it's not the punt fest that was the 1990s, but it's still entertainment, drama, and above all, racing. It might not be constant overtaking, but you're watching in the hope of if rather than when. BTCC also takes big steps to ensure that there is never a chance of one team or driver running away with it, and if a car or team does get too powerful, they just reel it in, and they ensure that the cars have as equal a playing ground as possible. The cars get a BOP, much like they do in GT and endurance racing. It's not like Formula 1 where it's a case of, here's your rule book, build the fastest car you can. The focus is on the racing as opposed to the engineering. So with that in mind, the BTCC is taking steps to try and not only bring the field closer together, but also put steps in place to ensure that the competition is pretty close. They already reduced the turbo boost on the BMW 3 Series and the Infiniti, basically the top rear-wheel drive cars, because they were too quick off the line. And they've also made other BOP adjustments in the interest of parity. Yeah, parity, that's, that's it, isn't it? But with all that said, the Infiniti and the BMW, even with the success ballast on board, were still the fastest cars on the grid, and both cars were developed with ballast in mind. Plus, when you've got drivers like Ash Sutton and Colin Turkington driving them, you've got cars that are very, very hard to beat. In 2020, the BTCC had a success ballast system, which was a sliding scale backwards from 60 kilos for first place down to sixth for 10th position. In race one of a weekend, the ballast is applied based on the driver's championship position from first down to 10th. Then in race two, it's applied to the top 10 finishers of race one, and so on for race three. So if you have a bad qualifying, you could be starting eighth on the grid with 60 kilograms on board, and it makes it harder for you to get through the field. So starting next year, the success ballast will go up to 75 kilos for first, and then down to 9 kilos. And if you're a mathematician, you'll be able to decipher that instead of 6 kilo increments, it's now 9. The hope is that the Ash Suttons and Colin Turkingtons of the world, and even guys such as Tom Ingram and Rory Butcher, will now find it A. Harder to cut through the field on heavier weight in reverse grid races, and B. Help the guys who are ballasted, and give them an opportunity to catch, race, and even pass these heavier better cars. The end result is closer racing, a closer championship, and have some of the guys who are always knocking on the door of the top 10 get into the top 10. There's also going to be a change to the qualifying system after a trial of a top 10 shootout at Snetterton last year. Last year, last season, you know what I mean. But it's not going to be run at every event. It's just going to be run at Snetterton, Silverstone, and Donington. Although it doesn't say which Silverstone layout because they use both. So you got the one with the new Grand Prix pits on the newly renamed Hamilton Strait and the old pit lane at Woodcut. Anyway, it's a bit like how the V8 supercars run at Bathurst and a few other events. The cars go out, they do a session where they get as many laps as they want and set a time and a set time period, and then the top 10 go out for one shot qualifying. They'll have the track to themselves and one hot lap available to set the fastest time. Biggest balls wins. What they're hoping will happen here is it will separate the naturally gifted hot lappers from those who need time to ease into it. And it could shake up the grid. If the guy coming into the round top of the standings makes a mistake on his hot lap, he'll be starting in the race 9th, 10th or something with 75 kilos of weight on board to boot. And make for a frustrating first race. So what does he do? Does he play to the numbers, knowing for race 2 he'll have less ballast and essentially sandbag his way into getting less weight? Or does he try and make his way further up the field for more points, but take more weight in race 2 than he would have done for finishing lower down in race 1 if he'd stayed... You know what I'm talking about. It's not just speed that'll play a part, it's strategy as well. However, 
it will be the last year that the BTCC uses success ballast because in 2022 they're bringing a spec hybrid engine into the sport and that will be supplied to every team on the grid and then instead of just putting weight on they'll just detune the amount of hybrid boost that each car has. And the BTCC has always been pretty good at this sort of stuff so I'm actually quite excited to see what will happen with this. And the final change to the rulebook for 2021 is that the option tyre will return for each round. Now in 2019 when Dunlop was the tyre supplier they brought a prime and option tyre for each round, similar to how Formula 1 had done in the past. The only exception to the rule, well there were two exceptions to the rule in fact, Thruxton where only the hardest compound tyre was available because of the high speeds and loads on the front left around that particular track, and Snetterton was the other where they used all three tyres, the soft, medium and hard in each of the three races. And just as a side note, they didn't all use the tyre at the same time, they picked which race they were going to run each compound in. So some cars might be running the soft tyre, or some cars might be running the harder tyre, and some running the medium. It was always good to see what would happen in each race. In 2020, Goodyear took over the tyre supplying duties, and they only brought one tyre compound to each race. But in 2021, they'll start bringing an option tyre to every event. So at Alton Park, Snetterton and Croft, they will use the soft tyre as the option tyre. At Knockhill, they'll use the medium as well as the two brands hatch rounds, Donington and Silverstone, while the hards will be used just at Thruxton for reasons already explained. The option tyre must then be selected by each team prior to each race, so they must declare which race of the three they're going to use that option tyre. And I'm loving what's coming up. I keep saying that the BTCC is the best racing you'll find anywhere in the world, and Alan Gow and the guys at Toka always manage to think about the sport as well as the show, while it seems that Formula 1 can only think about the show. Touring Cars doesn't have gimmicks like Fan Boost or DRS. They find ways of keeping the competition as close as possible without severely limiting the faster teams. Because after all, it's sport. The best teams, the best drivers will always finish at the top, and why penalise one team for doing a better job than everybody else? You didn't see the International Olympic Committee nerfing Usain Bolt by making everybody else start a few seconds ahead of him. Nor are you seeing the Premier League give an extra six points to the team that's currently at the bottom of the standings. But I'm pretty excited for next year's BTCC season, and I want to see if the new ballast helps keep the field closer and provide that great racing that we know it can provide. And if you've never seen the BTCC, there's plenty of footage of the racing and the gratuitous crashing it can provide on YouTube, and it's highly recommended to any fan of racing anywhere in the world. And when the next TC UK season starts, which is a BTCC eSports Sim Racing League, whatever you want to call it, when that comes around again, I'll be streaming my POV for every single round. It's fun. Join in. You'll have a laugh. So that's been the news of the BTCC's new rule package for 2021 and what it could mean for the top guys in the sport. It's a niche one, I'll admit, but let's be honest, that F1 race at Abu Dhabi was bloody awful. So leave your thoughts in the comments and get a discussion going if you are a BTCC fan, because I'd love to hear what people think, because that's why I do pressing issues after all. And if you've enjoyed this video, give it one of them, and if you want to see more like this, get the subscribe button clicked or tapped or whatever with the bell thingy on so you get all the latest from this channel and of course thank you to everybody on patreon for their continued support if you want to join them or just join in the discord stuff and twitter and instagram and all that kind of thing everything you need is in the description box for you so until next time i've been adam Ord. have a cracking day wherever you are in the world i'll see you all again very soon for another video so until then bye bye hit the mic again